So um, I decided to finally get myself a digital microscope and uh, this is going to be sort of an odd video in the sense that I have not really played with this unit yet so I'm going to be doing my introduction to it as sort of a review. Um, I'm going to be learning about it as I do the video so um, let's get started. So this is the Eleklive, 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 I have no idea. Some of these companies that they come up with uh, for these Chinese products are just boggling the imagination of how they came up with them. Random number generators, random digit generators, I don't know. So it's their model DM9. Um, I didn't actually see that number on the product anywhere, just on this manual. Um, the same thing or something really close to it seems to be sold by many different sellers. So I think it's another one of those sort of generic products that's just peddled under a lot of brand names. This is what the product itself looks like. Pardon the glare, I can't avoid having my my face in the picture, it's just too reflective. Well, maybe I can do something about it. Me, uh, no, that isn't helping. We'll just have to live with the glare. Anyway, so it's a digital microscope. It is not a stereo microscope, which is, I think, one of its major drawbacks, but then microscopes like this aren't stereoscopic just due to the the nature of the beast but it does limit their application a little bit uh, I'm just turning it around here so it consists of a heavy aluminum base this isn't plastic it's I don't know maybe it's actually steel or something it's quite heavy but probably made out of aluminum it has some sort of a textured paint type finish. I think it's paint. I don't believe that's a uh, sandblast finish. It has a little bit of electronics in a compartment below the base and four very soft rubber feet so it has a pretty good grippy feel on the table. There is a metal. This is aluminum. Uh, pinion, or I'm sorry, not pinion, but rack, vertical rack, so it has the teeth on it, and it's anchored to the base by screwing it into a threaded hole, and then this locking screw here turned down to hold it in place, so it is removable. There's a stop at the top which keeps this part of it from rising up too high, and even though it doesn't have a lock on movement, these knurled knobs here lower it down. Up until the point where the microscope actually touches the base. And these, by the way, are metal. This whole mechanism is metal. There doesn't seem to be a lot of plastic on here. There is this. Um, this is probably the stop. I haven't actually tried removing this yet, but if I do, I suppose I'll find... Well, no. So when I said this has a lock on it, or didn't have a lock, I may have misspoken. This may, in fact, be a lock. Ah, that's what it is. Okay, so it, it may not be too visible, but there's sort of a plastic or... I'm not sure what it is, but it's some sort of a uh, insert that goes in this groove, and this screw puts tension against it. 
So this is what keeps it from doing what I just showed it doing, namely settling down under its own weight. So that is necessary to have. Yeah, so if you don't have this turned all the way in, if you loosen it, then it has a tendency to do that. So you just have this turned in all the way and then it has appropriate tension on it and it won't sag under its own weight. So this part is also all metal. And there are two thumb screws which allow locking the microscope proper into this bracket. So if I loosen these, then the whole microscope can be turned or just lifted right out of the stand. So you could use this without it being locked to the stand. You could, you know, hold it up and move it up close to objects. And these screws also are apparently metallic. They sure seem like they're made out of metal. I, I don't think these are plastic. And they have little rubbery um, friction tips on them. So you can put the microscope back in. And tighten these up and lock it in place. But depending how much you tighten it, you can still swivel it around a little bit and just have these acting as drag brakes. The microscope does not come apart from the LCD display. I think the, the smarts, if you will, the logic circuitry for the microscope is in this part of it as is the power supply. This is a battery compartment here and by lifting this panel up the one and only rechargeable battery for the whole microscope is revealed. According to the manual this is a 18650 rechargeable lithium battery. So we go there. Now um, this screen can tip through, I think they said it goes uh, a full 90 degrees and it does, but that doesn't mean it tips all the way back. It can tip forward a little bit and then to what is apparently about 90 degrees from what that position was. So approximately 90 degrees of rotation lets you get a good viewing angle and you could be working up above something and have the screen tip back so you can look more or less down at it and you can tip it somewhat you know somewhat to compensate for glare and so on the base has two extra lamps I should have pointed out first that the microscope itself right up around in here has a ring of LED lamps to illuminate whatever you're looking at. In addition to those there are these two goosenecks um, that you can position around to add additional light as may be required. There's one on the other side. This cable here coiled cable plugs in with um, I don't know if that's a proprietary plug or not let's see it's at least similar to a USB cable a micro USB cable that would be and what it does is it provides power to the electronics in this base which are just for the lamps as far as I can tell Yes, so it clarifies that it is a USB plug, so you could presumably plug in a USB power source 
to the base and just use it by itself. But normally it's powered from the, uh, the battery up here when you're running off of battery power. And there's a dimmer control, a thumb wheel there, which controls the two gooseneck lamps. So if I point the goosenecks down here and reach around the back and operate that, um, that knob, right now it's not doing anything because the upper part is turned off. So might as well jump ahead to turning it on. Um, I should mention that this LCD here is a 7 inch diagonal display. I'm not sure from the specifications here if it says what the actual screen resolution is, but I think it's a fairly high resolution. I don't see that it says here unless it's buried in one of these numbers and I'm not recognizing it. So I'll just continue my uh, exploration of the controls on the LCD. There are three buttons on the lower left and three buttons on the lower right. The two outer ones here are for up and down to scroll through menus raise and lower other parameters, and a general OK or Enter button. And on this side, there's the, the right-hand one is the power button for the whole assembly. The middle one brings up an on-screen menu, and the left one either takes a picture or has something to do with switching between cam uh, still camera and video mode. I haven't quite figured that out yet. And there's also this uh, LED that is the only status LED. Right now it's showing green, which uh, according to the manual means that the internal battery is fully charged. So let's turn this guy on. I'll just push the button down here. Give it a couple seconds. Maybe I should have held it for a little longer. There we go. The lamp came on, the screen lit up. Right now it's saying, if this will focus, it's saying there's no SD card plugged in. And it tells you what the, it thinks the date is and the time, and that it's in still photo mode and some other specifications here, probably having to do with resolution. And the lamps down here, um, the lighting we're seeing here is only from the integral lights up in here. So going around the right side, there's another little uh, thumb wheel here to change the intensity of these lights. There's also the plug that goes to this dual forked cable, one of which is the one that supplies power to the base for those lamps, and the other one which goes to the wired remote control. Then there is a thing they call TF, but that's really for a micro SD card. And then finally, another USB port, which is to either power the whole microscope or to charge its battery or both. And I'm going to digress here briefly by just noting that what you get with this product, at least if you buy the version sold by Eleclev, it comes with what you see here and this um, thing that I don't know what they call it. Okay, they call it the light barrier. 
this transparent plastic lens protector and it's got to be there because the actual lens extends down it's that funnel shaped assembly you don't want to have that hit anything and there you can see the uh, LEDs up in there by the way uh, to protect that lens and presumably keep it within a reasonable range from any object this just sticks in by friction and you can kind of work this off from this part of it and then when you do that then this uh, light barrier can go on and it's sort of a bayonet thing where you stick it on and twist it 45 degrees and it locks on and what that does is uh, it blocks I think all the light or virtually all the light from these LEDs up here from getting onto the workpiece and uh, this is supposed to, and it's also got a black insert on here uh, I think this is intended if you're doing surface mount electronic component soldering and using this microscope for that purpose that this just doesn't work out very well it's supposed to re reduce reflected light when doing micro soldering so that's what this thing is for anyway so getting back to this I can use this knob here to turn the light completely off or bring it up to quite a high level let's just turn it off for the moment and I'll demonstrate the other lamps while we're on this subject now I'll reach around the back and use the thumb wheel down here at least on mine this is a much stiffer control than the one on the side of the LCD but it does turn there we go So I was starting to say that what you get with the package when you buy this is the microscope with its screen, the stand and its vertical post, the two lamps, the wired remote control, the light barrier, and that's it. To fully use this you need to have a longer USB cable, something that can reach from this to a personal computer and you don't actually have to use that to use this microscope but one of the modes of use of this microscope is as an auxiliary camera to a computer so if you're going to do that then you do need a USB cable probably from a USB A plug to the micro USB that uh, fits into this uh, socket over here if you're using it as a standalone not connected to a computer you don't and if you don't need to take pictures or video you're just going to use it real time then you don't need to add anything else in terms of memory but if you do want to take pictures or take video with this and don't want to do it tethered to a computer then you need an SD card and specifically you need a micro SD card that's what will fit in this slot on the side uh, to that end I read the manual and found out that Let's see if I can find it in the specifications. I think it says it somewhere. Uh, yeah, here it goes. It's not in the specifications, but it's in this FAQ page. Does it support and SD card larger? I think they meant and. SD card larger than 32 gigabytes. No, it supports 32 gigabytes at most. So, with that in mind, I purchased this uh, SanDisk micro SD card with a SD card adapter. 
Took me a few tries to get it out of there. So it's a SanDisk Ultra. 32 gigabytes. Micro SD card. And there's nothing on the side saying which way it goes in, so I'll try it this side up, see if it goes in. It's one of those spring-loaded sockets where it snaps in. Let's see if I can... There. So you push it in and it clicks. Push it again and it comes out. It still doesn't seem to recognize that I plugged in an SD card, so maybe I need to format it. So with that in mind, let's push the menu button here. I need to hold it. Hmm, it's not doing anything. Well, this is the first bad sign. I couldn't get it to recognize any controls after I plugged the SD card in. Now I've removed it. Uh, nothing responds on either the buttons here or the buttons on the remote. I've unplugged it from USB power and turned all the lights on. I'm going to see if it'll power down on its own um, if I just leave it unattended for a while. Um, it doesn't say anything in the manual about if it does a power down to save on battery power, but I'm kind of hoping that's something that will shut it off and maybe I can restart it, but there's no uh, reset button on this that I can find, nor does the manual mention one. So at this point I can't turn it off. It's like the internal uh, controller has crashed or something. That's uh, kind of worrisome. Brand new out of the box. Yeah, it's not responding at all. And I've also noticed that the clock doesn't seem to be running anymore. I think the thing's hung up. Well, I'm going to have to go to support at electlive.com. They claim to have excellent tech support. We will see. Okay, holding the power button for about 20 seconds finally did result in resetting it. Now I pushed the menu button once and that gave me the... Um, so you can push it multiple times. Pushing it once gets you the basic menu and it lets you pick settings related to photo quality or image quality. Push it again and then you can get to settings related to the device itself and then push the down button uh, date and time I push the OK button and it lets me pick the year it's 2022 Oops. 2022 OK uh, I think the, yeah, the format is year, month, and date so I want it to be the second because it's February. Went past it. Push OK again, and it's the 19th. Push OK again, and it looks like it's in 24 hour mode. So it should be 19. That's the hour. Okay, and it should be. And I'm good sticking with the month, day, year. Okay, I push. Okay, again. Uh, 
How do you get out of this thing? Hmm. Seems like I should be able to uh, push OK to get out of here. What if I change this? Yeah, it just lets you change the format. Maybe if I hold OK? No? Maybe I have to push the menu button. Yeah, that did it. I have to push the menu button to get out of that one setting. So, um, automatic shutdown. It's currently set to no automatic shutdown. That's good. And then screen protection which um, I'm pretty sure has to do with just shutting down the screen without shutting down the whole thing. But if you do that, then it looks like it's going to be broken, right? You won't know that it just did a screen shutdown. I think that would be confusing, so I'm going to not change that. Language, settings, you can go to English, Portuguese, Simplified Chinese, Japanese, French, German, Korean, Italian, Dutch, Russian, Spanish, Arabic, back to English. So I click OK, and I go down some more. Is there more light source frequency? This lets you um, pick... I know I've seen this before, uh, the manual doesn't describe it anywhere that I could see, but I think it has something to do with avoiding flicker or uh, getting a beat frequency between the frequency of the lighting in the room and the frequency of, I don't know, I think if they're pulsing the lights here, I don't know exactly what, but... Um, yeah, they don't they don't really menu mention it all in the uh, manual, so I'm inclined to just leave this alone for the moment. Line assist off. Okay. Formatting. I would like to format my memory card. Now here's where I got into trouble before. Maybe plugging in my. SD card. I'm going to do it again. It still doesn't acknowledge that I've put in an SD card, but maybe that's because it's not formatted. So now that it's in there, let me select formatting. All data will be deleted. So I go down to confirm and click OK. It says hold on. And it still seems to suggest that I don't have a card in there. And then you can go down to default setting. Um, I think that just takes you back to your factory defaults. And then there's, I think, some ability to change the firmware. tells me what version I have. It's a version from 2020, it looks like, late 2020. Version 1.0, maybe that's the problem. Maybe I've got an old version of firmware with this thing. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the menu. Oh, now that I get out of the menu, it's showing an SD card at some point it updated, so that's a good deal. Let me turn off the auxiliary lights. I don't think I'm going to need them. And I'm going to test this guy out with this uh, old vintage core memory.
I'll start out with it raised up. That should be the lowest magnification. Right now it's just showing nothing, but I think that's probably because it's just highly out of focus. So uh, this knurled focus wheel is accessible from the front and the rear, so instead of just rubbing a finger past it, you can actually grab it between thumb and forefinger and turn it. So let's see. Now we're starting to get an image. There we go. Looking down at that tiny core memory. Now the specifications for this say that the magnification ranges from, um, I think it's 50 times. Well, <clears throat> see this is kind of bogus here. Here it says 500 slash 1000, whatever that's supposed to mean. But elsewhere it says that it's, uh, I think 50 to 1200 magnification. So, what's the truth? Yeah, here it says, um, with it raised up you should get about a 50x magnification. Lowered all the way down you should get something close to 1200. So, <clears throat> something's lying. Uh, anyway, I'm getting a pretty clear image here. Now let's go to get higher magnification. I'm going to grab the wheels on the back and lower this down, but this is not a true zoom feature. I'm sure of it because if it was a true zoom, it would adjust the focus automatically as I change the distance between the lens and the objective. Uh, and it's not going to do that, so it's going to lose focus, I'm sure, when I lower it. And sure enough, it does. Get it right down there, pretty much to the point where it's touching. And now I'm going to have to... play with the focus until I get something. Oh, beauteous. That's a nice clear image. Let's uh, try taking a picture of this. Now, um, I think you can take a picture using this, but you're liable to jerk something when you do it. I mean, right now I can see that I'm jiggling the picture around. So, trying to take a picture this way seems guaranteed to get a blurry image. So I'm going to use the remote control here and if you just want to take a picture this button seems to do double duty as both a um, as a shutter control for still photos and also an OK button for using the menu through the remote control. So I'm going to try just pushing this. It says hold on and then it went away going to take another still image. Hold on, okay. Now I want to see about, and by the way it keeps showing this icon on the upper left hand corner which tells us that we're in still photo mode. I'm pretty sure that it, what it's doing. And just while I'm at it, I'm verifying that the screen is showing the correct time per my settings and whatever this stuff means. Um, I'm going to push the cam or the video camera button on the remote and it changes to the video icon there. But it doesn't seem to be taking a video yet, I've just put it in that mode. Perhaps if I push it again? Ah, yes, I get the little red flashing light, so just move it around a little bit. Yeah, 
and uh, push it again and the flashing red light went away. So let's raise this guy back up, get it away from the objective, get that out of there. So um, maybe this looks like a playback button, what if I push that? Okay, and it's showing an icon that suggests a video image and it shows a file name with an AVI that's a video format and the specifications do say that it takes video in AVI format so that's good so um, maybe if I push the play button it'll, again it'll actually play ah oh no it says push the OK button to play it Okay, and now it's got a little count up there. Ah, yes. So it is playing the video. And this tells me if I push the OK button, it's going to pause, which it did. I push it again, and it continues playback. And now it's done. So, um, what if I push this button again? I think it returns it to picture taking mode. If I push it again, it's going to return it to playback mode, but I want to be able to see a different thing that I took. I'm presuming it's going to show me the most recent image, so maybe pushing the up and down buttons. No. Try pushing this again. Ah, yeah, now, so it's showing me that I have a video up there. I'm going to push the up and down buttons. Ah, yeah, it changed to the JPEG image. So it's taking stills in JPEG mode, and it shows me that icon. So I'm seeing one image there. I'm going to push the down button again. And it's showing me picture number one. If I push it again, it goes back to the movie. So that's fairly straightforward. Not entirely intuitive, but enough that I didn't have to open up the manual to read that. So that does seem to be functioning. I don't know why it hung up before, but um, pushing and holding the power button did reset it. And uh, if that didn't work, I was going to reach around the back, open the battery compartment, take the battery out, and see if that would resuscitate it but as it turned out that wasn't necessary. So it seems like it'll be working. Hopefully I don't have to return it to uh, Amazon. Uh, let me use the side wheel here to raise and lower the intensity of the microscope's own light source. I don't know if there's any means by which you can delete images on here. I don't see anything that lets me delete the image. So presumably if you want to delete images off the card, you probably have to take the SD or the micro SD card out, put it in a computer and delete them there. Um, that's my assumption. But anyhow, um, That completes my brief overview of this product. I have to take a uh, publicity shot for the video, a thumbnail view, so that's probably about as good as anything. One other thing I want to say about this product, um, I already mentioned that it does not come with the micro SD card. If you buy it in this package from Amazon and with the Electlive uh, brand, <clears throat> I 
there are, again, what appears to be nearly identical products out there. I think the microscope and its screen can be bought from several brandings. Uh, you'll see subtle differences whether or not it comes with the goosenecks, for example. It may just come with the base and you have to use the built-in lighting and you don't get these, so if you're looking at one of these, make sure you get one with the extra lighting. You may not actually need it. Um, and different brands may give you different firmwares. That's the kind of thing I found a lot. You know, whoever generates this thing originally puts it out there and then they make it with different brandings and some of those may have the latest firmware versions, some may have really old firmware versions, or they may just have different firmware versions with different capabilities. Just because the product looks alike doesn't mean a particular brand didn't arrange to have somewhat different firmware in the product. Um, the other thing is some of them come with a micro SD card included in the bundle. This one does not, but I saw that uh, another brand seems to sell the same thing with the same gooseneck lights and it does come with a micro SD card and it costs about an extra eight or nine dollars. So you might want to consider that because uh, the SD card's worth, you know, I don't know, seven, eight, nine dollars. Good thing the memory is so cheap these days. Here's another thing that may or may not be included with the bundle. This ElectLive version does not come with the USB power supply or a USB cable for that matter. Um, there, you know, as you get it out of the box, there's no way to charge the thing up unless you have a computer or your own USB power supply and a suitable cable with a micro USB uh, plug on the end. Um, this is what I ended up buying for mine. Once I found it, it did not come with its own AC power supply. This is just one of the many generic USB power supplies out there. This is one of the Amazon um, I forget what they call it. It's, you know, Amazon Preferred or whatever it is. They're just saying that it's a very popular item and it's uh, just a few dollars. Fonken Travel Charger. Big long model number. No sane company makes model numbers that long unless there are a lot of options which can be specified by all those digits. So, yeah. Uh, universal power supply, 100 to 240 volts, 50, 60 hertz, 5 volt output, uh, up to 2,000 milliamps or 2 amps. Probably a perfectly good power supply. Anyway, it's the one I bought, and it did come with the, I'm sorry, it did not come with this cable. It was just the plug, and I had some short uh, micro USB cable laying around. Now I did read a review by somebody else that said theirs came with the cable but not the AC adapter. Mine did not come with the cable. So again, maybe small variations on, you know, which employee packaged the boxes that day or something. Anyway, that's I think about all I can say about this product at this time.